Good morning, Michael here, and today we're looking at Psalm 6, focusing on verse 8 to 10 for the exposition. Let's go ahead and read the Psalms in totality first, and it's subtitled, O Lord, Deliver My Life. Verse 1. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who will give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weak because of all my foes. Verse 8 Depart from me, all you workers of evil. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. Verse 9. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. Verse 10. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. And we look at the treasure of David for the exposition. Verse 8. Hitherto, all has been mournful and disconsolate, but now, your harps, ye trembling saints, down from the willows take. Ye must have your times of weeping, but let them be short. Get ye up, get ye up from your dunghills. Cast aside your sackcloth and ashes. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. David has found peace, and rising from his knees, he begins to sweep his house of the wicked. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. The best remedy for us against an evil man is a long space between us both. Get ye gone, I can have no fellowship with you. Repentance is a practical thing. It is not enough to bemoan the desecration of the temple of the heart. We must scourge out the buyers and sellers and overturn the tables of the money changers. A pardoned sinner will hate his sins, which cost the Savior his blood. Grace and sin are quarrelsome neighbors, and one or the other must go to the wall. For the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping, what a fine Hebraism, and what grand poetry it is in English. He hath heard the voice of my weeping. Is there a voice in weeping? Does weeping speak? In what language doth it utter its meaning? Why, in that universal tongue which is known and understood in all the earth and even in heaven above. When a man weeps, whether he be a Jew or a Gentile, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, it has the same meaning in it. Weeping is the eloquence of sorrow. It is an, uns an unstammering orator, needing no interpreter, but understood of all. Is it not sweet to believe that our tears are understood, even when words fail? Let us learn to think of tears as liquid prayers, and of weeping as a constant dropping of importunate intercession, which will wear its way right surely into the very heart of mercy, despite the stony difficulties which obstruct the way. My God, I will weep when I cannot plead, for thou hearest the voice of my weeping. Verse 9 The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Holy Spirit hath wrought into the psalmist's mind the confidence that his prayer was heard. This is frequently the privilege of the saints. Praying the prayer of faith, 
they are often infallibly assured that they have prevailed with God. We read of Luther that, having on one occasion wrestled hard with God in prayer, he came leaping out of his closet, crying, Visimus, Visimus, that is, we have conquered, we have prevailed with God. A short confidence is no idle dream, for when the Holy Ghost bestows it upon us, we know its reality, and could, know, could not doubt it, even though all men should deride our boldness. The Lord will receive my prayer. Here is past experience use for future encouragement. He hath, he will. Know this, O believer, and imitate its reasoning. Verse 10 Let all my enemies be ashamed and sure vexed. This is rather a prophecy than an imprecation. It may be read in the future. All my enemies shall be ashamed and sure vexed. They shall return and be ashamed instantaneously, in a moment. Their doom shall come upon them suddenly. Death's day is doomsday, and both are sure, and may be sudden. The Romans were wont to say, The feet of the avenging deity are shod with wool. <laughs> with noiseless footsteps, vengeance nears its victims and sudden and overwhelming shall be its destroying dispensation. Is that of the new? We pray for our enemies, not against them. God hath mercy on them, and bring them into the right way. Thus the psalm, like those which preceded, shows the different estates of the godly and the wicked. O Lord, let us be numbered with thy people, both now and and forever. Yes, indeed, O oh Lord, deliver my life. Trust you enjoyed the meditation. Michael here declaring yet again, Jesus is Lord. Until next time, be blessed.